Hey guys, this is Neo. In this video, I want to talk about the idea of curing Peyronie's naturally and uh, also for free, and what cure means in the context of Peyronie's, what it means to me and what it should mean to you. And um, it's kind of interesting. Uh, so the idea of cure, um, you know, you have to kind of break it down. Um, for me, um, I think of curing the disease as two, uh, two different things. There's being functionally cured, and then there's being aesthetically cured. And um, this is purely, um, mo mostly on a physical level is what we're talking about. I'm not, I'm not going to go into the psychological aspect too much, but I will go into it here where it, where it counts. But uh, basically, I am functionally cured and aesthetically cured. But I have my own definitions of even those um, two ideas. Now, um, <clears throat> you might think that being cured is to have your old penis back, to have zero symptoms and have your penis look exactly like it was before, and that is a different idea uh, completely, and it's not something I um, think is likely, uh, even if it is possible to get your penis to look basically like it did before, it's not something to count on and uh, even ask like if you have to ask, can you can I get my old penis back? Uh, like a lot of young guys ask all the time. Um, you're in trouble. The fact that you're even asking that is uh, it's a bad sign um, because this disease is much, much. Uh, it has a lot in store for you. Okay, um, and if you require your old penis back, you are in a lot of trouble. Okay, this disease is a long haul. So let's get that out of your mind for now. Um, and uh, the thing is, is it's um, the scar tissue in Peyronie's disease replaces healthy cells, of the actual cells of the penis that get damaged. And so theoretically, like scientifically speaking, there is no way to actually get those cells back unless your body creates new cells, um, you know, uh, which might be possible. Um, you know, the body does create cells. I mean, yeah, it's totally possible. But um, it's it's uh, not it's not our business to be going there in our minds, okay? Um, even if you do get something very close to your old penis back, uh, let's not think about that. Let's think about these two ideas I put forth first, which is the functional and aesthetic uh, cure. So functional functional cure. What does that mean? Uh, if you uh, so the problem with Peyronie's right is that we can't have sex or we can't have sex without pain or uh, hematoma or like bending after sex or uh, maybe you can't even penetrate or maybe when you go to work uh, you know you're in a lot of pain and you uh, you can't focus you can't sit you can't walk um, like taking a piss is almost uncomfortable and I had all this happen to me you know for, for years I was uncomfortable I didn't want to go to work because I could barely sit um, and, uh, yeah, sex was really stressful, and I couldn't even uh, really masturbate without extreme uh, bending afterwards. So, uh, you know, I, I couldn't really function. It, it really affects your daily life, and not, not just your sexual life. And, you know, sexuality is related to our daily life. So, you know, like, you kind of do have to masturbate once in a while. And even if you don't, um, it's, you know, yeah, it's still not nice to have a, you know, a bending penis, right? So, um, <clears throat> but now I don't have any of those issues after I've been um, doing traction and, and doing all these things. Um, and, I, I, yeah, I have no issues. I can have sex um, even multiple times, and I'm not really going to bend. But, um, so you could say being functionally cured is when it doesn't really bother you on a practical level. But interestingly, um, even the definition of the functional cure, being functionally cured, is a little bit uh, uh, unclear. I mean, not, I guess, uh, I'm not sure what word I could use for that. It's kind of <clears throat> different for everybody because for me, I have certain processes that I know I have to take. Uh, for example, you know, let's say I do have sex with a girl. After that, I might need to take a hot shower and just let the hot water run on my dick for a while. Or I might need to do traction by hand for just a little while. Just a little while, you know? But for me, it's so easy to do, and I know it works, that um, it's not like negatively affecting my life. 
and I had the disease under control, it just doesn't affect, affect me. So, you know, you might be like, oh, well, then you're not cured then, you know, if you have to do these things. Um, I don't think so because I, I'm, I'm happy, right? So it depends on the individual. So for me, I figured out the process for me, the things I need to do. And it's so easy. And usually I don't really have to do anything anymore. I barely even have to do traction anymore, but I still um, do it every day if possible uh, by hand, even for just a couple minutes. So um, for me, my life is not affected by the disease anymore. And to me, that's being functionally cured. And for everybody that may be different, um, you know, like what you need to do, you know, um, I mean, if you, you could get an implant, you know, if you have really, really bad case, you might need an implant and then you would be functionally cured, right? If you can get to the point where it's not bothering you anymore. And I know there's a psychological aspect to that. And we will talk about that in detail and I can help you with that. Um, but next let's just go to the aesthetic cure. So <clears throat> Not only am I functionally cured, but I am aesthetically cured, meaning that you can't really even um, see the dents uh, in, the, in the curve anymore. Uh, you can, if I really point it out and try to show show you or show a girl, I can show a girl, uh, you know, kind of where I had the, the bending and the hourglassing, and she, was, she could say like, oh, okay, yeah, I can kind of see it now. All right, I see what you mean. Uh, before it was really apparent, and after years of traction, uh, and and other things it's really not apparent and so um, aesthetically my penis looks almost the same as it did before the disease and um, for a while I actually thought my, my dick got longer actually uh, after doing traction all these years and uh, improving my my general health getting rid of insulin resistance and all these things um, I actually think it may have gotten longer and the, the studies um, on traction have shown that traction does make your penis longer so um, I know you might want your old penis back, but again, you don't, you don't want to even think about that. Um, you really just want to do everything you can to make it look good enough to where you are satisfied with it. So what it, so, so we have to break down this, this definition of an aesthetic cure or being aesthetically cured. What does that mean? Well, it does not come down to having a penis that looks good to the girl. It does not mean having a penis that looks a certain way. Um, it could mean having a straight penis if having a straight penis is what you require to be happy. So if you require a certain penis that looks a certain way, um, then you're going to have to get that in order to be cured aesthetically because that's that's what you require personally. So um, like you could have like a pretty big bend or dent and uh, you could, um, it, you know, it, but if you're sleeping with hot girls, young, beautiful women, you know, or, or a woman you love, uh, and the sex is good because you make it good, then, you know, you could be aesthetically cured because if you're satisfied with it. So that the aesthetically cured idea, the idea of being aesthetically cured comes down to, you know, when, when you're satisfied with it. And for me, um, it, it is not my original penis, and I don't require it to be. Um, the way, the way it looks now is perfectly acceptable, like to me, to me. And, um, girls do like it and it's, it's, it's enough, but, um, I don't require them to like it. Do you see what I'm saying? So you should never require a girl to approve of your body or any material thing you have, any kind of, um, thing like that. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it can, I know it can be a little bit frustrating because girls might tell you they like this type of penis or this type of guy, but the truth is, is that they actually don't. And, um, and it's the guy, this is what's really important is it's, um, it's the guy that makes the penis. It's not the penis that makes the guy. And it's the same for women. The, the woman makes the, her, her pussy look good. And you, you might think like, oh man, like, you know, I, uh, you might look at a, a picture of a pussy and be turned on and you say, no, man, like I love pussy, but I promise you if like I zoomed that picture out and it was like some really fat, unhealthy chick, you would be grossed out and you wouldn't be attracted to it anymore. Similarly, um, I always use this kind of analogy or not analogy, but this kind of thing where like if I had, a, if there, imagine a really fat chick who's unhealthy, doesn't care about her health 
and like you know just nasty and mean un unhappy so a bad person in every way and she's just disgusting and then imagine like a model next to her and they're standing side by side and what if i told you that they had identical pussies like what would that what does this tell you i mean you like would you be attracted to the fat girl would you want the fat girl's pussy why not it's the same as the models so there's a reason for this, right? Because the, 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 the dick and the pussy, the penis and the vagina, they're not supposed to be attractive in nature um, because they're literally just a gateway to, um, to passing on our DNA. And what makes them attractive is actually the, the individual, the individual's looks and the individual's personality and all these other things. So for a, guy, for a girl, her face, her hips, her body makes the pussy hot. And depending on those factors, you're attracted to her pussy. And the same is true for guys, but not so much looks. Uh, you know, this is arguable. This is a side point. But like if a guy has uh, a good personality, he's funny, he's not attached to the outcome in life, and he's just having fun, and he's non-judgmental and all these things, then she will want his penis, even if it's bent. And uh, you can prove this easily. Um, it's just... And again, the girl might tell you she likes a certain type of penis, just like she might tell you she likes a certain kind of guy. But uh, it's not true, actually. She, she might actually believe it. She might say, I love tall guys. Like, I love tall guys. But then she meets a short guy who blows her mind, who's non-judgmental, who, you know, who's, who works on himself. And then suddenly she's amazed. Wow, I, I like short guys, I guess. Or at least she is uh, completely okay and turned on by him and only him. So um, girls' minds will change a lot on what they're attracted to. And you have to understand that um, certain things like looks, uh, certain looks, possessions, or certain tokens, um, we can just use the word token for all these things. Tokens are, um, are very weak signals in uh, mate selection. And they are kind of just... Um, you know, girls and guys will try to grab onto them, like, oh, like, I wish I had a sports car, or the girl's like, I want a guy with money, I want a guy who's a doctor, and people will reach for tokens, only because um, they really don't know what else to do, they don't know where else to, to look for um, the mark of a good life, or the mark of a good man, uh, but a lot of the times, tokens fail, tokens will fail, and... Um, I can, I'm going to go into this topic in detail in another video because uh, I have a lot to say about tokens. And um, it's really key to, to beating this disease is to understand how this works. Um, but basically, uh, they're kind of superficial and they can um, be meaningless or kind of empty. And they will change. So a girl's preferences will change. Uh, you know... Um, girl I was with for years, uh, for a long time, she'd give me a hard time about how I don't have hair, I'm kind of balding, and, uh, but I kept joking with her about it, and um, telling her it was, you know, I like being bald and all this stuff, and uh, eventually she, now, she, now she actually says she's actually attracted to bald guys, and um, after me, which is kind of crazy, and uh, the same thing is true for when I, when I first met her, uh, she was 21 years old, and um, she liked young guys. That's what she told me. Oh, I only like young, like, model guys. And then uh, after sleeping with me and being with me for, for a long time, she completely changed, and now she only is attracted to older guys. And she, she, does, she can't even get turned on by young guys, is what she says. Um, so girls' preferences, especially for tokens, are uh, something that's uh, meaningless. And you don't need to uh, really worry about that. And the thing is, is okay. Like this video is supposed to be about curing the disease naturally and for free, as I, you know. But I have to get into this because it is related. It's it's really related to the whole idea of curing yourself aesthetically. But that's all I will say. I don't need. I don't want to go into it too much on this video because it's a huge topic, and um, I'm I'm gonna make a lot of videos on that. But, yeah, so uh, basically what this all means is your um, being aesthetically cured comes down to you being satisfied. Um, and uh, that's, that's really it. So can you, 
um, you know, how do you do it, right? Um, so for me, uh, I used traction by hand for, for free um, for years, and that completely got me where I am today, and I feel great. Um, you can take all the supplements, all the, all the drugs and stuff, but that can be very expensive. So um, I have kind of a different outlook now. I, I used to take CoQ10 and all these, all these different things, um, and now I don't take them at all. Um, I really uh, just do traction. I do uh, hyperthermia, heat therapy, just with like hot water. I know that if you don't have hot water in the house, then it's not, f I guess that's not free, but most people have hot running water. Um, or you can make a rice sock. So just take a sock, put rice in it, and uh, uncooked rice, and tie the sock to itself. And then you can put it in the microwave and you have a, a very cheap um, heat pad. And you can use that for heat therapy. So that's not free, I suppose, but it's very cheap. But um, if you want to talk about how to just truly beat the disease completely for free, then you have traction and, and diet. And diet is huge. Um, as I've said before, Peyronie's is a metabolic disease, or at least uh, very closely tied to mitochondria and metabolism, intimately tied. And it's tied to uh, hyperinsulinemia. Uh, hyper uh, that's too much insulin in the body, which happens before diabetes, before blood sugars even rise. And you, you have to get a, a fasting insulin test to, to see if you have it. But um, I, uh, yeah, just, you know, the studies have shown that, that as, I've, as I've said in another video, I don't really need to get into this. Um, you can check out my other video on this, but studies have shown that diabetes and uh, insulin resistance are really tied to, to Peyronie's and um, a, lot of other, a lot of other things. But um, I, I want to talk about diet a little bit more in this video because um, it does tie into supplements. So the thing about um, supplements is you're taking something to kind of cover up an underlying issue. And there are, um, as far as antioxidants go and like CoQ10 and all these things, um, there are endogenous antioxidants and there are exogenous antioxidants. Exogenous means coming from outside the body. Endogenous means made in the body. The body makes at least five antioxidants by itself. So if you're just eating, living a normal life, or even fasting, your body is going to be creating antioxidants. And these are glutathione, really powerful antioxidant, uh, sod, which is superoxide dismutase, very powerful and used in Peyronie's studies and in the Peyronie's cream that recently came out, um, and CoQ10. CoQ10 is an endogenous antioxidant, and there's some other ones. But it's kind of interesting because we, you know, we rub sod on our penis and we take CoQ10, um, or a lot of people do, I mean, I don't anymore, and we're basically covering up a, um, an underlying deficit with our system. Our body should be making these things. And interestingly, insulin resistance uh, and diabetes uh, really messes with your endogenous antioxidant system. So your glutathione is down. Um, all these CoQ, I don't think your body can use CoQ10 properly. Um, it's, uh, you, you want all those things to be working properly. And intermittent fasting or a ketogenic diet um, have, have been shown to really help your body uh, use its own antioxidant system. So, uh, you know, ask yourself, do you want to take CoQ10 to cover up the fact that your body can't use it? Or do you want to use SOD when your body just can't use it? Or do you want to fix that issue on a mitochondrial level and on a, on a, on a, um, on a base level? So um, I, I'm not against supplements, and maybe I should be taking them, but I don't, I don't think I need to anymore. Um, I've been doing keto for one year and completely eliminated my insulin resistance. I have energy now. I'm... I'm more social. I don't get I, I don't get sick anymore. I don't have any nerve pain anymore. I don't have any numbness. My penis is not numb anymore. My hands are not numb. My face is not numb, and uh, my Peyronie's symptoms are better than ever. And that's because I fixed this underlying mitochondrial issue, and my antioxidant defense system is uh, is strong. Uh, so uh, so yeah, um, and you know, it, it's hard to say. Like you know, maybe I, maybe you could take CoQ10 on top. Of having uh, being on the keto diet and all these things and maybe that's fine it's really like nobody really knows and that's because there aren't that many studies on it but the thing about the thing about the disease is that I think the ultimate goal is obviously being functionally cured and aesthetically cured but um, 
you ultimately want to make it easier on yourself, right? So you have to find your process, your treatment to, to, to make it work. And everybody's is going to be different, but you don't want to be like popping pills every day. You don't want to be putting on the damn uh, traction device every day. I mean, arguably, that could be pretty easy. Uh, you know, you just put on the traction device, watch a movie. That's pretty awesome. Um, you know, um, you don't want to be having to do all these things. Um, but, you know, uh, and it, like I said, it, it's really up to the individual. And I, uh, I can't tell you, you know, what's right or wrong as far as how often you're like uh, doing vacuum device therapy or traction by hand or traction with a device or heat or all this stuff. But for me, I want my treatment uh, to be easy. Um, so that's why I don't take supplements anymore. I want it to be cheap. I want it to be free and I want it to be easy. So every day I, I still do traction a little bit. And, um, you know, I, I know personally how, how often I can have sex, how often I can masturbate without aggravating it. So you, you have to really learn about how your Peyronie's actually responds to all these things. And that is going to take you a while. It's going to take you a long time to uh, figure that out. And you might have to do a lot of trial and error with um, how you masturbate and how you have sex, how often. And I'll uh, definitely make videos on that too. But um, so be very patient with yourself. Um, you know, the supplements are, are great. Um, you, Pentox, you could take that. You could totally take um, Cialis um, you, you, or you could, you know, take citrulline, arginine all these different things, uh, ginseng, there's so many different things you could take, so many. Um, but ultimately, I'd say we want to find a system that's not so stressful. And the, the thing is, is one of the most stressful things is always asking yourself, am I doing enough? Am I taking the right things? What, what do I do? What do I, and, you know, you're going crazy. And I went crazy with that. Um, and nobody knows what is best to take. And exactly. I mean, I can tell you the best study on any supplement ever for Peyronie's was on CoQ10. But, I, but CoQ10 is actually used to treat mitochondrial dysfunction and insulin resistance and diabetes. So why don't you just treat the insulin resistance with diet, right? Um, so again, let's try to make things really, really simple um, when you're treating yourself for Peyronie's. Um, and that's even if you do decide to get surgery. I, I'm against surgery unless you absolutely need it. But, uh, you know, uh, unless you, uh, but still, if you do need surgery, if you do need an implant and things like that, or you do decide to take, to get injections and things, you, you're still going to have to focus on maintaining a healthy penis your entire life. And uh, I don't, I don't think I'll ever stop doing traction. There may be periods of time when I don't do it so much, but I plan to be doing traction once in a while, a little bit even uh, for the rest of my, my life. And you know, I'm, that might upset you because you don't want to do that. You know, you, you don't want to have to think about it. But you know, I think the issue goes a lot deeper than just convenience. You know, is that really a problem to have to stretch your penis by hand in the shower every day? For the rest of your life is that a problem you brush your teeth every night is that a problem why is it so hard to do like it's like flossing your teeth you just do it and the reason why you are so upset about having to do traction every day is because it's related to sex and your identity as a man but if you were out having sex with a lot of girls hot girls and you know they didn't mind your penis they didn't mind watching you stretch your dick in front of them or whatever and then, you know, you wouldn't feel so bad. So even if you have Peyronie's, um, you know, I, I, I always recommend if you have Peyronie's, you have to learn, uh, you have to learn game. You have to learn, at least you have to learn, um, not game, but, uh, well, you have to learn success with women. And, you know, that, that can mean monogamy. That can be with your wife. Um, or it can mean going out and sleeping with a lot of beautiful women or the girls you find attractive. That's what that's what's important that you uh, talk to and learn to succeed with the women that turn you on and trigger you. Um, I, I recommend guys with Peyronie's do that, even if their penis is is really messed up and they have you know they're really struggling. I think the best thing a guy can do is go out to a bar, learn some fucking learn um, learn some game, 
and, and tell girls about it and see how they react. And it will really uh, make you feel better when they um, don't judge you for it. Even if they do judge you for it, you actually may feel better too. That's the weird part. <clears throat> that's, that's an irony um, in, in, in game or in success with women. Um, a lot of the times when you own something and talk about it, um, whether or not she accepts it or not, um, you do end up feeling better. Because deep down, when it comes to insecurities, we're all expecting um, the worst. We expect to be almost physically harmed for our, our, our imperfections. Because deep down, we, uh, you know, we expect, like you know, a, a long time ago in a smaller tribe or something, um, having a flaw and not showing people that flaw, like you're hiding it, it would have been very scary in, a, in a, like a tribe situation because you could be ostracized and kicked out of the tribe and then you're dead. So when we fear our imperfections and, and, and feel bad about our imperfections, it's because we're actually fearing death in, in the deepest sense. Psychologically, that's kind of what it is. You know, I mean, when we feel bad about how people think of us and, and women or men or society or feeling bad at our job, Ultimately, it's related to a fear of death, a greater fear of genetic death. And um, this goes really deep, and I would love to talk to you guys about it more. But in this video, I kind of did just want to go on kind of a freestyle about this idea of being, of, of curing yourself. And um, I know I, I've, I've been branching out a lot in this talk, but... I think it, it's all related, and I can't, I cannot talk, I cannot talk about curing Peyronie's disease without talking about some psychology, <clears throat> some evolutionary psychology, <clears throat> and um, and things like uh, pick up success with women, uh, and some really deep, profound stuff. I, there's no way I can't. It's it just, you know, unless you're going to talk about a cure in a very scientific kind of way, but that's just the disease is too systemic because it's about sex and sex is ultimately about passing on our DNA and it's about fear of death, fear, fear of genetic annihilation. So uh, it's all really relevant, but uh, I, I hope you got a good message out of this. Um, I guess the, the biggest thing I want you to know is that your own treatment, your own recovery from the, the disease is going to be very personalized, um, both in how you treat it and also um, your own process going forward until the end of your life, how, how you're going to keep on treating it, um, like how often you do traction, all these things. Uh, I, I mean, I do think the number one answer to Peyronie's is traction by hand and um, a low insulin diet, such as a ketogenic diet or intermittent fasting. I think those two free therapies or whatever um, are the cure for Peyronie's disease. Uh, yes, there's surgeries, all these things, supplements, but again, getting to the very root cause and then doing some uh, physical therapy, um, that's, uh, I think that's the cure. Um, and then there's, of course, like, at how, like all these things, like how often do you have sex and you know, how should one masturbate? But that's all really important. But as far as if somebody asked me what's the cure for Peyronie's disease as of now, I would say traction and diet modification. Um, and maybe like, yeah, heat therapy or something, but ultimately just the, those main two, those have really kind of, those have cured me. So, um, but again, all the details are going to be very personalized for you and, and what other treatments you choose, it really is going to be a very personalized journey and um, your emotions and your attachments, expectations, and how you feel about yourself as a man, uh, it's all going to be a very personalized experience in your, in your mind. And uh, anyway, I, I think I'm going to stop this video here. I, I would love to just keep on going on this topic. Um, but I did just want to talk about um, the idea of a cure mostly. So I'll uh, hit you guys up with a new video soon, I think. And um, thank you so much for watching, guys. And uh, see you next time.